BIOS thing, I mean, we've got a little bit of a mystery on our hands, don't we? And it's a very little mystery, let's be clear. All right, so first up, congratulations are in order to AMD. They got this launch, and this is a crazy launch. I mean, with the graphics cards and the CPUs and so many CPUs in the stack, huge congratulations are in order to AMD and pretty much everybody connected to AMD. I mean, TSMC, it's a win for, uh, you know, all, I mean, even the board partners, MSI, Gigabyte, Asus, and ASRock. I mean, it's it's such, such an exciting time. What a time to be alive. You got the i9 versus the 90, uh, 3900X and uh, you know 9900K, it's like toe to toe. It seems like AMD's winning on the uh, the realized single thread performance. So that is nothing to sneeze at. That's I mean that's you know Intel's had that crown for 10 years or more. So yeah, it's really exciting. But there was one anomaly, one variable, and that was the reviewers that had trouble getting a single threaded and lightly threaded boost clocks because that's something I struggled with. It all goes to the press deck. There's this one slide in the press deck that was just haunting me the entire time. And it's like, here's the 3900X. And here is the performance that you can roughly expect. And it was 4.6 gigahertz on one thread, 4.55 gigahertz on two threads. And it was sort of trail off. And, and it was basically like for eight or more threads or four or more threads, uh, you were basically looking at 4.3 gigahertz all core. The 3900X is two six core chiplets on a thing that's really similar to the 3600X, except the 3600X is one chiplet and the 3900X is two chiplets, but wasn't really seeing that 4.5 gigahertz boost. The press BIOS version N11 really wasn't good for me. I did not like it, it did not work well. I went off reservation and started downloading other versions of the BIOS that I could find and I reached out to try to get other more different versions of the BIOS to like figure it out for launch day. And I found other versions that worked better, but still weren't quite mirroring the performance there. So I messed with timings and PBO and some other stuff. And I finally found a combination of BIOS and settings and clock and other stuff that worked reasonably well for the 3900X uh, to let me achieve up to 4.3 gigahertz all core, which is what I saw in the press deck, and about 4.5, maybe kissing 4.6 a little bit. A completely different set of configurations would let me get to 4.65 on the 3900X, but my multi-core performance really suffered. In all cases, uh, enabling PBO seemed to cause performance regressions, and so I decided that it was time to do a bunch of testing. I've got about five different versions of the UEFI with the different versions of the Agiza for our Gigabyte Aorus Master, which is primarily gonna be the subject of today's video. All right, so I ran through it and I've done a bunch of testing. I got a bunch of CPUs from Micro Center. I've reached out to a couple of people, like the head scratching thing, and uh, we need more data. So I've got a spreadsheet and that spreadsheet is going to compile the data. We, uh, we still have a little bit of a mystery on our hands. Now to be clear, the possible performance uplift here is not going to be dramatic. The performance delta between the 3900X in single threaded and lightly threaded applications versus the 9900K, it's very, really very, very small. This is really just, it's almost a bit like hot rotting. Like I wanna squeeze out a few extra performance points, maybe PBO is gonna improve, because my experience with PBO on like the 2700X was that PBO was phenomenal. On the first and second gen Ryzen, PBO was was, was great, especially, it wouldn't really help you on the multi-core, I mean on the single thread scores, but on multi-core, man. And on the Threadripper 2990WX, PBO was just, it's incredible. As long as you can manage the heat and thermals from your VRM area and your CPU, I mean, a, uh, a 2990, running at some ridiculous PBO clock frequency. That's kind of what I was expecting with 3900X, and I'm not really sure that I've I've got there yet. So, and I can do 4.5 gigahertz all core on my 3900X. Well, 4.4 to 4.5. I'm not 100% sure that 4.5 is stable, but 4.4 at a more reasonable voltage that I'm kind of trying to dial in because it varies a little bit from board to board. So again, this is something that requires more investigation, but to be clear, a lot of people worked over the weekend at AMD and board partners like Gigabyte, and they really busted their hump to do stuff. And they did an amazing job with this launch. There are some things to fix here, but it's not critical. It's not dire. The, the fixes, if the fixes 
like best case scenario for the fixes, it's gonna put the 3900X toe -to -toe, more toe to toe, perhaps slightly better than the 9900K, but it's only slightly behind the 9900K in some reviews. And I think one of the reasons that our numbers were better than everybody else's, not really everybody else's, there were some people that had numbers comparable to us. I think Linus's numbers were pretty much in line with, with ours. And that was because we worked with our 3900X until it was basically in line with the numbers from the press side of things. And in our article, it was like, yeah, this is with PBO and a lot of custom tuning and that kind of thing, because I don't want to leave any performance on the table. I mean, we're in a world with the Intel performance maximizer now, which is basically going to enable five gigahertz all core. So it's like, what can you really get out of the CPU versus what you can really get out of the CPU without resorting to anything super exotic. And so in a world with PBO working as well as it did with the 2700X, you know, it's double plus curious that manual overclocking right now is so much better than PBO. It doesn't make any sense because manual overclocking on first and second gen Ryzen, you weren't going to do better than PBO. I hope it's not the case that with third gen Ryzen, you're going to do better with manual overclocking than with PBO because PBO was such a brilliant, brilliant feature. I think it's probably going to get fixed in an update, but I need to gather more data. And I'm sure that AMD would love to have more data on which CPUs do what because testing a bunch of CPUs here, uh, the variance is all over the place. The best CPU that I found so far, retail 3800X, one chiplet, eight cores, 4.3 gigahertz, 4.25 to 4.3 gigahertz, all eight cores, no problem, at pretty much stock settings. There's a little bit of a caveat there because there's some BIOS version shenanigans in there and I don't wanna say too much right now, but yeah, 3800X, crazy. And also, boost clock, 4.525, without me doing anything on the 3800X. How crazy is that? It's completely crazy. So, yeah, I don't know. My expectation with PBO is gonna be that on the 3900X, that you get 4.3 to 4.4 gigahertz all core while retaining the 4.6 gigahertz boost. Maybe even like 4.625, 4.655, maybe with that little extra OC offset. That's my expectation, but I don't know if it's gonna materialize. Wow, things got super weird in testing. All right, so I got access to more CPUs, retail CPUs, CPUs from Micro Center. Just... Well, this one doesn't count because this is Zen Plus, but a lot more CPUs. The 3800X, which the, the results from the 3800X were surprising, but I don't have a conclusion, but I will share with you what I know. First off, the voltage. People are freaking out because Ryzen idles kind of high. I'm not 100% sure about this. Would love, you know, a clarification, but as best I understand it, when your CPU is idle, it's not got a lot of current flowing through it. There's voltage and there's, there's amps, and that, that makes watts, and voltage times amps is watts. It's, you know, basic, basic stuff here. The more current that you have flowing through the CPU, the more amps that you have flowing through the CPU, or the more wattage, but wattage is a function of voltage and amps, remember, so it's a little misleading, the more of a chance that you have of electromigration, which means that an electron hits a copper ion and physically moves it because of inertia. That's a thing that happens. And it happens uh, more often when you're dealing with like the scale of 40 nanometers. So at a higher voltage, when your CPU is, is idle, uh, there's not really a lot of current flowing through it, but the voltage is really high. So because there's not a lot of current, there's not a lot of chance of electro migration, even though the voltage is higher. When you put your CPU under load, it's got to drop the voltage because the current has increased and you want to de decrease the chance of electro migration. And if you have a lot of electro migration in your CPU, it's going to decrease the longevity of the CPU over time. It is in effect wearing over time. And so that's sort of some of the weirdness that some people are confused about, I think, as best I understand it. <laughs> if, if that's not exactly right, would love a correction. I will be happy to like redo the video and be like, guys, I'm sorry, moron. But, uh, cause I don't, I mean, there's a lot of trade secrets and special sauce here and I don't know how much AMD really wants to divulge and that kind of thing. That's just, just a guess. So I see my CPUs idling at like 1.43 to 1.4546 voltage. But then when I run Cinebench, like in the 3900X, it drops down to like 1.2 volts. And when it's underclocked and the clock is running low and also idle, then it's more like one volt. And that also varies a little bit from BIOS version to BIOS version. There's also the this whole Agiza, you know, debacle. And so testing a whole bunch of different CPUs with a whole bunch of different versions, there's a huge variance from CPU to CPU. For me personally, my 3700X, not great. 
in terms of not really being able to do anything, but my 3900X is a lot better. I'm able to do a 4.5 gigahertz all core overclock with my 3900X, all, albeit at a uh, at a voltage that's probably causing a little bit much electro migration and will probably kill the CPU fairly quickly. Don't wanna get into that for this video, just wanna talk about what's going on with the Agiza. It's being worked on, it's fine, it's not going to make a huge difference in performance for single thread and lightly thread, okay, yeah, maybe, but not multi-thread. But I always go back to that slide in the press deck, the 3900X at 4.3 gigahertz, because uh, in general, the performance of AMD's core is better than Intel's at five gigahertz. Um, the performance of 4.3 gigahertz of that 3900X is going to be better than Intel's performance, certainly at 4.3 gigahertz, probably that's true all the way up to about 4.6 gigahertz all core. If you do the, the PBO thing and you can eke out, you know, up to 4.5 gigahertz like I did on the 39, the 3900X is not gonna touch that unless you're getting into, I mean the uh, 9900K is not gonna touch that level of performance, 4.5 gigahertz all core, until you start getting into like 5.1 gigahertz and beyond on the 9900K, which I just don't see happening. And it's gonna vary a little bit from application to application. AMD wins some, they lose some. Multi-core, certainly, because it's 12 cores versus eight, no contest. So, a lot of confusion and stuff there. For the Gigabyte, the Aorus Master, F5e, out of 14 CPUs, 12 are boosting correctly. So, at least they seem like they're boosting correctly. Now, PBO is a whole different story. If we go all the way back to the press BIOS, in general, although not universally, the press BIOS is terrible about um, PBO. And if, if you just enable PBO, you'll actually get a performance regression. And again, testing 14 CPUs, there is a lot of variance over that. The CPUs that I had b that work best are 3800X and the 3600X. Both of those are retail CPUs. The 3800X effortlessly hits 4.2 to 4.3 gigahertz, all cores, no problem. And it seems like the one thread boost up to 4.5 works. In fact, I was seeing like 4.525, basically out of the box. Now, is that silicon lottery? Did I just win the silicon lottery on the 3800X? Maybe, it's a sample size of one. Did I happen to just thermal paste, you know, plus 10 on that roll? I, I don't know. There's a lot of data that has to be covered. So I'm trying to put together a spreadsheet and this might actually be something that other YouTubers can do. Like maybe we can collectively get together and build a Google Sheets spreadsheet and put the BIOS version and the observed single thread and the observed multi-thread and like try to gather some data. Cause I'm sure that data will help AMD as well, including like the manufacturing, like a, like a picture of it or something like that. So if you want to participate in that, send and you have a CPU, email it to me and I'll try to get it on a spreadsheet because we need data, we need more data. So my data is super puzzling. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what to conclude from it except for different CPUs with different BIOSes on different boards are wildly different. Now we're only talking about a few percentage points of performance difference here. This is not anything earth shattering. Don't like freak out with like your hair's on fire, but it would be nice to know what's going on. I'm Wendell, this is level one, and uh, I'll catch you later. Mm -hmm.